Hey you folks, so I've got a bit of a weird video plan for the for this evening. Um, now normally in my videos I you know install a mod or I, I try and fix something but in this particular case I'm gonna try and break something. Uh, so what I've got here is a perfectly functional Game Boy Advance SP that I've been basically using as my guinea pig for a while. Um, there's no battery in it because of who I am as a person and um, well basically what I want to do I wanted to talk about what happens if you're building my custom battery board that I uh, that I made a video on a little while back I'll, I'll throw a card up there or something or throw a link in the description um, but I want to talk about what happens if you build it incorrectly so I designed this PCB to interface directly with the, the um, I don't know, whatever you call those, the contacts from the SP. I made this board so that if it were installed back upside down, it won't make contact, you know, it'll only hit one of the prongs. Uh, or if it's installed backwards, nothing will make contact here. Um, however, I've gotten few emails or uh, messages or you know some people just brought it up on discord that attaching the battery leads backwards is quite easy now I do have the back of this board marked um, but I can see how that's kind of hard to see because it's under the solder mask so I'm gonna make a revision to these boards just to make that a little bit more clear um, but otherwise red on the left black on the right but anyway, just to prove there's no shenanigans or trickery involved, and this is insanely tight in this console, but that's fine. Um, what we've got here is perfectly working SP. Can't say as much about the game. Yeah. Luckily, I've got several. Ta-da. Boots fine, everything works on this thing. Um, but I want to talk about what happens if you accidentally get this battery backwards. Now, instead of uh, swapping the terminals around and basically making a battery that's going to brick my device, I'm just going to take my power supply and hook it up backwards. And um, I just need to grab a spudger or something to get this thing out. There we go. I'm just going to drop that back in my. SP here. So the uh, on this console you can see, hopefully you can see, that the contacts even in here are labeled. The bottom one is the positive, the top one is the negative. So if I take my power supply and I think I need to set that a little higher. That'll be good enough. In this case the negative is my purple wire and the positive is my orange wire. This is how it's supposed to be hooked up. If we grab both of those pins, should boot up just fine. And indeed it does. I'm gonna zoom out a little and see better. And that's all fine and dandy. But the purpose of this video is what if you accidentally hook it up backwards? on there. There we go. Nothing. Even the power supply doesn't like that. I don't know if you can hear it, but it just makes this really high-pitched noise and there's nothing on the display. Looks like it's shortened out or something. Alright, let's try it again the other way. This actually might not be enough. I might have to make a battery. Flip that on. Still comes on. Yep. All right. Plan B. This power supply has an absurdly low um, power limit, I guess, which 
might actually not be high enough to trip the trip the fuse in this device. So let's get it apart. And I'll just put a battery on the terminals backwards. That'll be easier. I have to take it apart anyway. So the battery would normally sit here with no issues, and it'll boot up just fine. And good lord, I can't even get that in there backwards. I might have to make the uh, make some sort of design. Oh no, this will work. So if we hook that up to the terminals backwards. Try and boot it up. It's hard to see because it's flipped over, but you can probably hear that it's not booting up. Uh, so let's try it again the normal way. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Now my console's not booting. So that's what I was going for. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't foresee my power supply having that limit that would affect it. Anyway. So the problem is we trip the reverse current protection on this device. Um, now the fix I think is pretty easy, but hold on, we'll get there. Um, but it does require some pretty fine pitch soldering. So how the reverse current protection in this device and quite a lot of devices actually works is on the battery terminals um, there is a diode connecting the two with a fuse in between them uh, so when power is applied normally current can't flow across that diode and uh, across that fuse with current flowing with current connected backwards it's going to flow across that diode and basically trigger a dead short condition in the battery, which will put entirely too much current on the fuse, and it should trip that fuse. So let me just get this taken apart. Maybe. There it goes. I'm just going to put these buttons where they belong so I can get them out of my way. All right. So let's take a look at what we got here. There are two fuses on the device. There is one right here labeled F2. Um, I'm gonna have to reply to an email because I keep telling people that that fuse is F1, but that's the fuse I meant. Uh, and then F1 on the back here. Since this fuse is on the back, uh, if you actually follow these traces, you can see it's connected directly up to one of the pins on the charge port. This is the fuse that, if this fuse blows, it's going to detach the charge port from the rest of the circuit. Uh, the idea is that, you know, if the charge port physically breaks and uh, the, the pins come in contact with one another or the, the positive voltage pin comes in contact with the shielding or something like that, in the event of a catastrophic failure, it's to prevent something more expensive from breaking. Um, yeah, it is kind of a bummer because not everyone can, you know, get in there and solder that that fine pitch component. Uh, but it's better than burning out the CPU, I think. Anyway, so let's take a look here. The charge port fuse. Last I checked, charging on this device worked, so it should not be blown. Test my leads. We can see continuity across my leads is zero ohms. That's great today. So continuity across a fuse that is not blown should also be zero ohms, and that is exactly what it is. This fuse on the front uh, here, uh, labeled F2, 
This is the fuse that disconnects the battery from the rest of the circuit. Um, like I said, with the reverse current protection and the diode uh, that allows the current to flow directly between the two battery terminals, but only when the battery is reversed, um, this fuse will trip and it should show an open circuit. So let me get that tested. And as you can see with my leads touching, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so you can see better. I put one lead down there, the other lead there, not touch it, or no current. If I touch the leads, we can see my meter still working. No current across that fuse. So that means we have to replace this fuse. Like I said, not really a big deal, but it does require some pretty fine pitch soldering. So let me go ahead and boot up my soldering iron. And while that's loading, let me find the fuse I have. So because of who I am as a person, I already have these just laying around. These are 500 milliamp, uh, 32 volt, 0603 fuses, and I'll throw a link to these down in the description. These are not exactly the right spec, but in this case, it'll work perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of these off here. Pull this out there. And the easiest way to desolder this thing is just take your soldering iron, grab a bit of solder, just throw a big old ball on the tip of your iron. And uh, basically soak that fuse into the ball. Yeah, you can see it's stuck on the bottom of the iron. I can't really get that closer to my hand to make the camera focus. I don't want to burn myself, but you can probably see it sitting on the tip there. Then, take my tip, just clean it off, and look at that. No more fuse. Good enough. We don't care about salvaging that fuse because those are one-time use, and I already blew it. All right. So to fix it now, and you might be tempted to um, to just put a big old blob of solder across these things, but fuses are safety devices. This thing blew because there was a fault. Now I have already cleared that fault, so I'm comfortable replacing the fuse, but you might be tempted to just a blob of solder and short out those uh, those pads there. That is very bad practice because if we make that mistake again next time it will blow the CPU and we will not be able to fix this. Oops, that's wire and not my solder. Just to clean it up a little, I'm going to add just a splash of flux and both pads, or try, get both pads at the same time. And usually it'll self center, but this thing's wicking some, some heat pretty quickly here. Good enough. Not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Better than it was, though. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just a wee bit. And we'll check it out with the multimeter again. So if we touch the leads together, you can see one ohm this time, apparently. Oh, there it goes, zero ohms. And as you can see, my fuse 
has been replaced and it is reading as it should. Let's try it out. Oh, that screw went in crooked. That wasn't good. Oh, well. Make sure the power is off or on. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure to line up the switch right. I'm not going to bother putting in the screws yet. Pop my game in here. Pop in a battery. And Bob Jonti. So that's it. Pretty easy fix, not the end of the world. Oh, I should have showed this off too. Um, we should have tested to see if it charged. And now it's not charging, but I have a feeling that's related to my port here because if I wiggle it, but if I hold it in place, it seems to charge fine. It would not do that, it would come on um, before I replace this fuse, if I were to check and see if it would charge, it would come on for a second, then go off, just like that. Uh, and that's because, well actually, pop the battery out, it'll do this. You see it comes on, goes off. Now if you try it out, and you're getting that, that's because your SP either thinks your battery is completely full, or more likely, it's not detecting your battery. Now in this case it's because there's no battery inserted, uh, but before I replaced that fuse it would have been because that fuse was disconnecting the battery from the rest of the circuit. Now on some consoles you can boot them without a battery, but this one apparently won't let me do that. Yeah, no. I think you can do it by booting it with the battery installed and then removing the battery. Yeah. That works, but that's not very practical if your fuse is already removed or blown. Uh, but there you go. I think it's a pretty easy fix, but if you're not comfortable with that surface mount soldering, I could understand why it would be intimidating. Uh, but trust me when I say surface mount soldering, is extremely easy. I think it's easier than soldering uh, the through hole components. The only caveat is you need yourself a good pair of tweezers. Um, but once you've got tweezers and once you're comfortable using your tweezers, and this is not a good pair of tweezers, I do not recommend them. It's just what I have. Um, it's pretty easy. You just do one side, flip it around, do the other side. Bob Gianti. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope. Uh, if you did accidentally reverse the polarity on your, your battery mod, I hope this helps you fix your Game Boy Advance. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night, and uh, stay safe. You know the drill.